I made a video on all eight of the cognitive functions that power the MBTI 16 personality type system. But I understand that people might not want to have to click around and watch eight different videos. So I've condensed all of them into a single super epic video. Let me know if I should do this with some of my other videos. Anyway, let's just jump into it. So if you've been doing some digging into the 16 personality types, it probably won't be long before you bump into something called the cognitive functions, like FI. When I first heard of these things, I had no idea what they were. Great, I knew a personality system only based on four letters was too good to be true. Now I gotta learn eight more letter combos to figure it out. So basically a cognitive function is just a way to describe a certain brain process that is going on inside your head. If you're an INFP, ISFP, ENFP, or ESFP, you're probably super familiar with FI, especially if you're an ISFP or INFP. FI has pretty much taken over your entire head. FI stands for introverted feeling. And I know I've described FI is a diva function before, and that's true, but it's also not. We'll get into it later. FI is all about the individual. The high FI user just sits back and lets things happen, and then they ponder on it. How do they feel about what just happened? And how does this square up to their past experiences? And through all of this mind stewing, the FI user develops a set of values based on personal experiences. As you can imagine, these values are super individualistic, and a lot of FI users won't agree on the same thing. Normally, people think of FI users as not liking logic or reason very much, because those things suck. But you can be an FI user who just really values logic. FI can really be anything to anyone. It's like Play-Doh. People often perceive FI users as soft and squishy, not the type to get into arguments or fights. And that's kind of true. As FI users mature and get older, they realize that surprisingly other people have values too. We don't all live in a valueless hellscape, and people can value things differently than you do. It's kind of hypocritical to go around trying to be the most authentic version of yourselves, yet denying others that same ability. So FI users learn to adopt a living and let live lifestyle. People will think differently, and that's okay. As crazy as it seems, some people actually like small talk and chatting about the weather. That doesn't mean FI users won't state their views and be very confident in them. These views took them a while to form, so they're gonna say them. Not necessarily to change your mind, but to speak their mind. It helps them feel true to themselves. And this is why I don't think FI is a selfish function. When mature, FI users can be very tolerant and empathic of others. They will agree to disagree and let everyone have their own thing. With time, FI users learn how to work with others and be part of the group, but at the same time, not sacrifice any of their individuality. Young FI may be selfish and a diva, but old FI is a Zen Ascended Master. Extroverted intuition, or NE for the cool kids, is kind of like Google autocomplete, but instead of completing every word you enter into the search box, it completes every thought you think. So if you've ever wondered why your ENFP friend can never get you a sentence without changing the topic five times, that's why. If you're an INFP, INTP, ESTJ, ESFJ, ISFJ, ISTJ, or a especially an ENFP or an ENTP, you're probably super familiar with any, and gosh, that's a lot of types. For such a weird cognitive function, you are quite popular. Any doesn't see the world as being made up of mini planets called matter, but more so as ideas. Well, I'm sure many high NE users are materialists, but my point is, any is an idea function. Ideas are where the fun is. Sensing parties are so lame. Any is very creative. High NE users have no problem coming up with new stuff all the time, but it doesn't have to be made up from whole cloth. Any is excellent at taking one idea and gluing it to a completely different idea. Basically, extroverted intuition can turn anything into a crossover. Any looks at the world all around us, and it looks for patterns. Imagine the world being a super large connect the dot puzzle. Now you basically have NE vision. Extroverted intuition is kind of like the nomad function. High NE users can see the world as one with infinite possibilities. And with infinite possibilities, why would they ever want to settle down? It wants to try all the things. Or I guess, think all the things. To NE, there isn't just one answer to a problem. They see all the possibilities. And know nothing is truly black and white. Heck, they might even get offended if you say there's 
only one answer. The mind of the NE user is like a giant idea laboratory. They can take a new idea and do a whole bunch of thought experiments with it. Break down the ideas and put it back together again. Then the NE user can take that thought and see if it makes sense or squares with their moral compass. And if you're an ISTJ or ISFJ, you use your lab to destroy new ideas because you guys hate fun. Introverted sensing, or as I like to call it, the guilty pleasure cognitive function, or I guess the healthy guilty pleasure function? SI is a very zen function. It's very in touch with the senses, and wants to achieve balance within. The outside can be a chaotic mess. Introverted functions are selfish. If you're an ESFJ, ESTJ, INTP, INFP, ENTP, ENFP, or especially if you're an ISFJ or ISTJ, you're probably very familiar with SI. SI users like to make traditions and rituals to make them happy, like having a set of habits that they do every day, or ordering the same thing at the restaurant every time. All of their food is poisonous, you see. Most people really don't like chores or habits. They're boring, but high SI users love them. Taking out the trash is like going to Disney World for them. There is a simple satisfaction in small accomplishments, like having a clean car or a well-stocked pantry. Speaking from personal experience, with having SI in my third slot, I don't look forward to doing chores, but I enjoy it when I do them. So why don't I look forward to doing chores? I don't know, ask my brain. I figure if I looked forward to chores, my house would look like Mr. Clean lives here. SI can get a rap of being stubborn and stuck in its way. And of course, it's an introverted function. But the truth is, as high SI users get older, they become more open to new ideas. Look, it's simple. SI users love habits, right? We always want more of the things we love. So the only way to get more habits is to experience new things. But SI users don't explore to experience. They explore to collect. It knows what it wants to try and where it's going to go. High SI users are very good at taking care of themselves. When they go out on their adventure looking for new habits and traditions, you know they're gonna have a water bottle. And not just any water bottle. One of those fancy ones with a filter built in. And they're gonna have granola bars and a roadside flare. Because you never know what's gonna happen. I like to think when SI users close their eyes, they see a display of, of all of their levels. You know, water intake, when they had their last meal, if you gave this video a like yet. High SI users have it sorted. They've never had to have a friend throw a roll of TP into their bathroom window, that's for sure. You might think with all of this info that high SI users users are really well put together. And they are, but they might not exactly look like it. SI doesn't develop structure to be flashy or impressive, or even really to have great success. Someone with high SI might work out every day, but it's not to look great in a swimsuit. It's so they can age gracefully and not get winded when they're trying to check the mail. They build habits for comfort. SI is all about comfort and easiness. And it can be a bit indulgent at times too. There's nothing wrong with taking it a little bit easy and enjoying the simple things. That's why I like to call it the guilty pleasure function, but a kind of healthy one. Extroversion and thinking. Two things INFPs aren't really well known for. In fact, I'd say they're known for the opposite. So how the heck is that in our cognitive function stack? It's like mixing hot cocoa and ice cream. Kind of feeds the purpose. If you're an INTJ, ISTJ, ESTJ, ENFP, ESFP, INFP, ISFP, or especially an ENTJ or ESTJ, then you're probably very familiar with TE. And if you're one of those types, but you're not familiar, don't worry, TE is already very familiar with you. TE is the getting stuff done function. There are a lot of other functions known for being productive too, but TE stands for tasks achieved. You see, T is such an innovative function, it can get a word added to the dictionary in no time flat. Extroverted thinking looks around the world and notices that it's a dump, which isn't that impressive, we all kind of know that. But here's the cool thing, TE makes a plan to fix it. Not that the dump is a fan of these changes, but extroverted thinking doesn't care about your feelings. It cares about results. High T users are all about checklists and spreadsheets. I don't know how they survived before, out. Those must have been some dark times. Big goals may be hard to accomplish, but T is excellent at breaking them down into smaller steps. It's kind of like the Stairmaster function. Not only does high TE love making to-do lists, it's very picky about them. 
You can't just put stuff in any order you like. Let's just say if you were going to go for a swim before filling the pool, things aren't gonna go very well. And now you're going to have to go to the ER before turning the water faucet. The entire day is ruined. All because you couldn't do things in the correct order. All of this micromanagement might seem pedantic to many, but there's a reason for it. It's not just because high T users like bossing people around. Don't get me wrong, that is a reason, but it's not the only one. Extroverted thinking is all about organizing and making systems and habits for getting stuff done. They'll have a night and morning routine, but it won't be the relaxing, glamorous ones you see on YouTube. These are hardcore routines for doers. All of these habits are very practical and tangible. Relaxation isn't in their dictionary, and once their writing campaign is through, it won't be in any dictionary. T never stops, it keeps going. And depending on what function it's combined with, high T users can really start to neglect themselves. INFPs and ISFPs have a strange relationship with TE, like all types do with their final functions. If you have third slot TE, like ESFPs and ENFPs, as you mature, you can really learn to harness extroverted thinking and use it to take over the world. But with final slot TE, there's always going to be some resistance. It's like your relationship with your mother-in-law. Things can be good, but never great. Speaking personally, I like organization habits. I agree that success or failure is determined by our habits and systems, but I hate schedules and feeling like my life is being dictated by a clock. I wanna be spontaneous and have freedom, not live by lists and rules. So now most of my life is trying to figure out how I can create a schedule that is completely unplanned and random. I'll let you know when I figure it out. Extroverted sensing, or SI, is one of the eight cognitive functions. And if you're an ISFP, ISTP, ENTJ, ENFJ, INFJ, INTJ, or especially an ESTP or ESFP, you're very familiar with extroverted sensing because it's in your cognitive function stack. And, well, this function is kind of awkward, it being the INFP's blind spot function after all. It's kind of like a fish trying to understand a cloud. It'll get you wet, but you can't swim in it, and it's not water. Point is, it's confusing. But I got some really good glasses and a seeing eye dog, so let's get started. Extroverted sensing is all about physical things in the present moment. Because all you have is the now. The past is over, and the future may not even be a thing. Like, someone is predicting the end of the world every other day. And chances are, one day they're gonna be right. High C users aren't big fans of abstract concepts, like philosophy or metaphysics. A high NE user might debate for hours about if a tree makes a sound when it falls down in the woods and nobody's around, Meanwhile, SE users will be listening to the noise of local trees falling down and will know enough to avoid them. High SE users can grasp abstract concepts. They just kind of bore them and drain their energy. It's not where they get their fun from. SE isn't a big fan of planning either. Don't get me wrong, High SE users will make plans and actually complete them. But if your plan involves making a lot of future decisions based on things that haven't happened yet, High SE users are gonna tune out. It's for that reason that they don't like long-term planning that much. So much stuff is bound to change. Why would you want to worry about something that hasn't happened yet? And that sounds like an absolutely wonderful mindset to me. But unfortunately, I'm gonna worry about what I'll do if an evil witch turns me into a frog in the future. No one expects it to happen to them until it does. I'd say that SC is all about instant gratification. What can I do now? in the moment. If something doesn't have a tangible effect, they just won't see much of a point in it. With all the focus on the physical present world, it can be really easy for them to get distracted. There is just so much to do, things to sense and bubble wraps to pop. But still, when things get real and it's time to go, SE users pounce. I like to think that SE embodies the present, SI its sister function, represents the past, and any its weird uncle function embodies the future. TI or introverted thinking is basically just logic for the unlogical. TI is one of the eight cognitive functions. And if you're an ESTP, ENTP, INFJ, ISFJ, ENFJ, ESFJ, or especially an INTP or ISTP, you're super familiar with TI because it's in your cognitive function stack. TI is kind of like the logic function, but its logic is a little bit different than TE, its sister function. TI is all about consistent logic. Everything from start to finish of a 
system has to make consistent sense. If you're gonna make a measuring system that starts off with 12 inches makes a foot and three feet makes a yard and God knows how many yards make a mile, uh, TI users are going to throw a fit. It's completely arbitrary and makes no sense. Meanwhile, TE users are just fine with this system because it works and all their measuring tools use inches anyway. They aren't going to buy a whole new set of tools just so they can have an argument about if King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk or drinks it so much he died pissing it. High TI users can get really picky with small details. To them, consistency is paramount. It's like high FI users with their values. But just like FI users, TI users can be stuck in their heads trying to figure stuff out. They spent so much time trying to figure out if God could microwave a hot pocket so hot he couldn't eat it, that when TI users hot pockets in the microwave is done, they won't even notice and someone else will grab it because they're not eating it. TI is all about exploring ideas and weighing them against their internal logical framework. It builds tools based on its own experiences and ideas and uses them to add new ideas to its system. Basically, the older a TI gets, the more complicated their ideas become. High TI users seek to simplify everything, but in a way that keeps its complexity and nuance. If that makes no sense to you, you're not wrong. Like I said earlier, TI is rationality for the non-rational. It can be very subjective, but surprisingly high TI users are able to marry the simple and the complex. They can build logical systems, not based on anyone else's inferior garbage, but based on their own consistent framework. TI might not be the most practical function, but it plays an important role in teaching, advising, and guiding. You know that wise sage-like character from every fantasy story? They're really smart, powerful, but don't really do anything except explain exposition to the main character, and maybe has one epic fight scene. Yeah, most of those characters have TI somewhere in their cognitive function stack. If you are an ENTJ, ENFJ, ISFP, ESFP, ESTP, ISTP, or especially if you're an INFJ or INTJ, you are very familiar with NI because it's in your cognitive function stack. NI focuses on narrowing things down and creating a main idea. Well, NE focuses on broadening ideas and coming up with new ones. So basically getting distracted and procrastinating on doing its homework. Think of it like this. Imagine there is a squirrel sitting on a tree limb. Let's call him Nutmeg. If Nutmeg prefers NE, he's going to go away from the trunk of the tree and follow all of the different branches and see where they go. Looking at all the leaves, maybe finding some nuts, or even a lady squirrel. And this would make a great segue for a dating app sponsor, but since I have integrity and would never advertise one of those things, check out my video roasting an MBTI dating app when this video is done. Link in the description. But an NI nutmeg is going to go towards the trunk of the tree. An NI nutmeg doesn't see a point in following all the individual branches. They're all made of wood and they have the same leaves. It just seems like a waste of time to them. The only thing that's going to happen from going all the way out there is there's going to be less wood under you and there's a better chance you'll fall to the ground. NI has a tendency to simplify things. And if you ask me an INFP with second slot NE, I'd say it oversimplifies things. I'm not a big fan of lumping different ideas together, but NI will mix Pepsi, Sprite, Coca-Cola, root beer, Fantina, and Dr. Pepper all into one can and call it Coke because NI is Southern apparently. But as much as I knock NI over its generalization of soft drinks, it's terrific at noticing patterns and overall themes. High NI users make amazing detectives. They solve the Scooby-Doo cases before Shaggy and Scooby even mention food. Yeah, so within the first few seconds of the episode. High NI users are also really great at using patterns to predict the future. If people regularly think you're a psychic, you probably have high NI. Or if you're the last person to die in a horror movie, yeah, I'm definitely not going to chase after a big, scary scream with no weapon. You're definitely a high NI user. NI isn't always exact. I mean, it's rarely exact, but it doesn't need to be. By noticing patterns, high NI users know when they need to be specific or vague. It's a great time saver. Well, any is kind of a hot mess, turning the smallest things into massive projects. Welcome to an idiot's guide to extroverted feeling, available for dummies too. And if you're an INFJ, ISFJ, ENTP, ESTP, 
ISTP, INTP, or especially if you're an ENFJ or ESFJ, then you're very familiar with FE because it's in your cognitive function stack. FE is like an emotional mirror. It reflects the emotions of the people around it. FE pays close attention to everybody's feelings, and then it reflects them as its own. Effie is heavily affected by the opinions of the crowd. Basically, if everybody else wants chocolate ice cream, then Effie will change its preference and want chocolate ice cream too. That way, you can get one ice cream box, and the poor ice cream man doesn't have to carry a leaning tower of ice cream across your unpaved walkway. Because of this, extroverted feeling can come across as fake to some. You don't want chocolate ice cream, you just bowed into peer pressure. But I don't really think that's fair. Effie isn't secretly resenting all of the chocolate ice cream likers because it couldn't get vanilla ice cream. It's genuinely enjoying the ice cream that it got. When Effie makes a determination to feel a certain way, it genuinely feels that way. It likes mirroring others. To a certain extent, of course. If Effie's lactose intolerant, it's not gonna be popping Pepto-Bismol pills all night. It's gonna get Froyo no matter what. Effie doesn't behave like this because all of its users are super sacred angels. Effie is always reading the room and taking everything in. Other people's emotions and feelings have a great effect on their own. So if a room were to turn into an impromptu boxing ring, you can bet Effie wouldn't be the biggest fan. High Effie can be incredibly dependent on other people. They're the type that would be constantly giving their friends customer service. How would you rate our service? Would you please take the time to rate our service? My happiness and self-worth is completely dependent upon your ranking of our service. Please fill out the darn survey. It's incredibly important that Effie knows how you're feeling at all times. And if you aren't into sharing, don't worry. Effie knows how to make you talk. Thankfully, extroverted feeling is really, really good at reading other people and can seamlessly transition parts of their personality to reflect whatever fits best in the moment. We all do this to some extent. You don't act the same way you do at work as you do at home. Or at least I hope you know. Mosh pit! But extroverted feeling takes it a step further. In many ways, FE is like all things to all people. It's like a social chameleon, smoothly and effortlessly transitioning through life whenever it needs to. Again, this might sound really fake, but it's not. To Effie, being truly themselves and truly genuine is reflecting other people. It's being a mirror. I don't get it, but I'm an INFP with dominant F5, so I don't think I'm supposed to.